If you introduce a change to a system at equilibrium, it will shift to other side to cancel the change. This was contribution of a French chemist uh, known as Le Chatelier, and the principle is contributed to him. Now the changes are either concentration, pressure, and or temperature. Let's look at the effect of concentration first. And for sake of uh, argument, I'm going to give you one reaction, and we are going to dissect that reaction. Uh, the reaction is production of methanol from gases of carbon monoxide and hydrogen. And methanol is the first member of alcohol and it's a fuel of choice. I also give you the value for enthalpy of this reaction. And it's negative 202 kilojoules per mole. By now you should realize the negative stands for exothermic, the energy is exiting the system, it's on the product, and it's crucial for sake of argument once we get to temperature. Now concentration is easy, if you increase concentration of one, you will shift to other side. Uh, so let's say concentration, the bracket stands for concentration, of carbon monoxide increases. What happens, if you increase this, the system has no choice but shift toward product. So this makes it shift toward product. What happens if you increase concentration of uh, another species, let's say uh, concentration of um, methanol, what happens to that? If you increase concentration of methanol, it's the same thing, same concept. It will shift to, to the other side, which is this time reactant. So if concentration of methanol goes up, the system shifts towards product, reactants. Sorry. What, what happens if you drain methanol, then you will shift toward methanol. If you remove this rather than increase, if you decrease this, then you will shift to that side to give you more, which is good for the system. So if you want to produce more methanol, drain it by all means. Shift towards product. Now, one thing you should uh, accept at this stage is that once you play with concentration, there is no effect on value of K equilibrium. K equilibrium or K concentration, same thing, does not change. when concentration changes. You only change the, sh uh, the position of equilibrium. You either go further to right or left. Once you are there, you create a new proportionality or ratio. K stays as is, doesn't change. Uh, let's look at the effect of uh, pressure. This is also easy, but let me give you the equation one more time. So it was carbon monoxide plus hydrogen giving you methanol. We decided it's exo, and the heat is here, which is exactly 202 kilojoules per mole. Now, pressure, uh, you have to uh, accept the fact that it only applies to gases, and if the gases are ideal, they obey this law. Whether they are real or ideal, they follow this principle. If temperature is constant and number of moles or quantity of gas is constant, this is as if PV is equal to a constant. So the relationship of pressure and volume is inversely proportional. Why do I do that? Because sometimes in our questions, the examiners try to trick you. If pressure goes up, volume is going down, and sometimes they phrase it as volume is decreasing. What is the effect on equilibrium? So you have to know this for sure from your stoic. Now, if pressure uh, goes up, you go toward the side with less particle of gases. I'm going to write it so you remember it. So if pressure goes up, uh, equilibrium, the reaction, shifts to the side with less number of number of gaseous particles. 
which simply is moles because we want the end to go up so the pressure comes back to what it is now for this example let's just look at it uh, pressure goes up pressure goes up uh, now on the reactant side you have gas and gas you have one particle of carbon monoxide two of hydrogen that is three moles and on the reactant side you only have one particle of uh, methanol gaseous phase so one mole so it's important that you know it applies to gases and you immediately make this ratio three to one so if pressure goes up for this reaction the reaction shifts toward methanol CH3OH now let's just uh, see if we agree on the concept of volume what happens if uh, the question is phrased as uh, if volume goes up what what would happen to this system so immediately you should realize the volume is in denominator if you go up if volume goes up pressure goes up goes down so this means pressure is being decreased now you go to the side with more particles to give more particles so the pressure is exerted by them and it comes back to what it was so if pressure goes down the reaction shifts towards the reactants just like concentration what I want you to remember here Kc again does not change us no effect on Kc on value or magnitude of K equilibrium or K concentration which is exactly the same however temperature changes let's look at temperature effect of temperature uh, and then I said remember this is a exothermic reaction so let's just rewrite the equation one more time plus 202 kilojoules per mole now if it's exo if temperature goes up temperature is just like concentration temperature is quantity of heat if temperature goes up for this case if let me rewrite this if temperature goes up this is what happens Temp if temperature goes up now you are shifting toward the reactant in order to reduce that temperature at the temperature shifts toward reactant and what happens and at this stage you should remember that K equilibrium is nothing but product it's a homogeneous reaction they are all gases over reactant if uh, if you're increasing temperature and you're shifting to the toward the reactant that means methanol is being decreased this numerator gets smaller and the denominator which is carbon monoxide goes up and hydrogen goes up so that means K equilibrium decreases so KC decreases now you can memorize it I know many of you memorize for exothermic reaction if temperature goes up Kc goes down so I'm going to write it for exo if temperature goes up Kc goes down this is the proportionality now you should agree that every exothermic reaction in reverse is endothermic reaction so if if you rewrite that equation in reverse so let me just do that if I write it in this fashion then this is endothermic reaction 202 kilojoules per mole now what happens if you increase the temperature if you increase the temperature then you shift toward product so the reverse is true and this uh, never changes for endo thermic reactions if temperature goes up Kc increases and you shift 
toward towards product. So temperature is a tricky one, but uh, look at the equation. Make sure you know which is exo and endo, and then for exo, if temperature goes up, Kc goes down, and we are always looking left to right. For endo, if temperature goes up, Kc goes up. With practice, it becomes friendlier. Now let's look at effect of catalyst. What happens if we introduce a catalyst? Now for the same reaction, in order to speed up the reaction, uh, they use uh, either uh, copper oxide as catalyst or zinc oxide. So copper oxide, what I wrote up here is the catalyst. Now, if this, this is an exothermic reaction, so if I put energy here versus a lapse of time, uh, you have your reactants here. And then you always have a minimum of energy known as activation energy to overcome. And then you have your products here. Now this is E activation without catalyst. This is a forward reaction and this is a reverse reaction. Now what happens if I introduce a catalyst? If you introduce a catalyst, this activation energy gets reduced, but equally for both sides. So equilibrium is reached faster, but there is no effect. So introducing a catalyst uh, has no effect on position of a equilibrium does not shift it to left or right and no effect on value of Kc. Kc is only affected by temperature. Now if I give you, uh, if you remember rate versus time for equilibrium We decided at beginning you always have some reactant which is consuming and then becoming product and then there is a steadiness. So this is your forward reaction and then products uh, at zero at beginning but then they start coming to life and then there is a plateau here. This was our equilibrium. Now this is equilibrium. without catalyst what happens if you introduce a catalyst you simply reach equilibrium faster so the reactants come here and reach that plateau and the product come here so this is equilibrium with catalyst so all that happens is the time gets shrinked. So the time is smaller than the normal time of reaching equilibrium when you introduce a catalyst. To summarize everything, uh, this is a table that you should uh, sort of agree. Concentration uh, changes position of equilibrium. If you increase one, you go to other side. Has no effect on value of Kc. Pressure for gases only is important. If you increase pressure, you go to the side with less particles of gases. No effect on Kc. Temperature, be very careful. It will change both position and Kc. If you are endothermic, increase temperature, you will shift to the product and Kc goes up. So for endo, temperature goes up, Kc goes up. For exothermic reactions, temperature goes up, Kc goes down. It's, it's a crucial point to remember. Catalyst has absolutely no effect on position or value of Kc. It only makes the time that you reach equilibrium faster. Equilibrium is reached faster or quicker.